M and J Audio Theater presents Chet Cheddar's Tales from the Morgue. Walk this way, won't you? I have something to show you. Oh, let me introduce myself. I am Chet Chetter, the morgue attendant. Oh, it, it's quite a beehive of activity around here today. You see, we're upgrading our embalming room. We, we must keep up with the technology here in the morgue, you know? Uh, and this is called the Smooth Mover. It provides a friction-free surface to transport a, a cadaver from one area to another. Oh, silly me, you wanted to hear a story, didn't you? Well... I have a humdinger for you today. It begins at midnight in the peaceful village of Biloxi. Everyone is fast asleep. No one sees the small rectangular object that streaks through the night sky and lands near the bank of Miller's Pond. that this planet appears identical to our own, yet it is over a hundred times the size of the crowded planet of Borna. Yes, the atmospheric analysis has proven what we have long expected, wise one. Yes. The creatures of this blue planet breathe oxygen as we do. Excellent. Rejoice, my brothers. We have found a new home. Send a probe to Barnett Quark. Inform the others of the inhabitability of this blue planet. They should begin arriving at once. Yes, wise one. I detect no humans in this area, Master. Shall we exit this vessel? Yes, let us do so, my brothers. But be attentive. Apparently, we have arrived near a water reservoir of some sort. It is remarkable how similar... Wise one, look! It is one of our own kind. It is a Bonakian. Impossible, Quark. The others will not arrive until the sun sets twice. Yet, yet it does appear to be a Bonakian. It possesses the same features that we do. The fur covering his body, the flat tail, the sharp teeth. It is eating the outer surface of that tree. The tree is about to fall. This is most peculiar. Attention, Bonakian, when did you arrive? Identify yourself. Wise one, I have identified the creature with the analyzer. It is not Bonakian. It originates from this planet. It is known by the name of Beaver. Beaver? It cannot speak. It has a very low intelligence. Hmm, and this cannot be more perfect. The beavers look exactly as we do. Yes. We will act as the beavers act. Yes. Note, the creature has constructed a crude dwelling I composed see. of tree limbs. Yes. We will do the same yes. and conceal our vessel. Yes, yes. We must not speak aloud in the presence of humans, my brothers. Absolutely. They will dismiss us as mere beaver creatures. Yes. Yes. When the others arrive, we will then begin the invasion. Yes! Yes! yes. Beavers. I'm telling you, Rex, if I never set eyes on another one of them tree-chewing, flea-bitten beaver critters, it'll be right nigh too soon. Well, there's the dam right there. Oh. Here, hand me the dynamite. No, oh, uh, here you go, here you go, Rex. 
You see, I got me a trench dug from this here pond to my land so I can irrigate my crops. And every bow-legged year it's the same thing. Them knock-kneed, buck-toothed varmints dam off the dad blame stream and cut off my water supply. I understand, Ernie. Now hand me that screwdriver there so I can connect these wires to the plunger. Here you are, Rex. I hate them plumb despise them flat-tailed river weasels. I could just spit tacks. I I'm sorry to wake you up out of bed at midnight and all, but... Well, I knowed you had them explosives you saved back from the war, and the Biloxi police wouldn't do nothing about it. They're too busy picking their noses and spinning their pivot teeth. Yeah. And also, I hear when you want something blowed up, you call Rex Rody. Oh, pyrotechnics Rex, they used to call me back in the war. Yeah, you don't say. All right. Got everything hooked up here. Yeah. I'm about ready to... Blow them up. That's a yeah. time, Rex. Blow them critters back to creation. Well, I don't see any beavers around right now, but uh, it's a good time to get the dam. Here we go. Uh -oh. <laughs> you blow them sticks sky high, Rex. That's uh, a time. Look at that. Oh, tell you, you. Look. Huh? It's a metal object uh, of some sort. What the heck's that? Yeah, it looks about 10 feet diameter. Yeah. It was underneath that dam. Yeah, it's a big metal box crate looking thing. Say, Rex, why don't I go down and, and get my winch and pull that bugger out of the pond? We can take her down to the bugger boy scrap yard and they're liable to get a 25 or 30 bucks for that thing. Oh, don't be such a backwoods hick, Ernie. We gotta tell the sheriff about this right now. The uh, sheriff? Oh, Dead blame it. All right, all right, Rex. But if the Gazette writes a story about it, remember, we get full credit. Hmm. The humans have departed. Hmm. And what damage has our vessel sustained, Glorp, from the explosion? Only exterior structural damage, wise one. It can be easily repaired. But we have been discovered... I think that we should confront the humans now. Ridiculous. We would be outnumbered. We must wait for the others to arrive. No. No, Glorp is correct. They have discovered our vessel. They will return. We must seek out the leader of this village and inform him of our invasion. Prepare your weapons for lethal attack, my brothers. We will enter the village now. Good morning, Deputy Rowland. Yeah. What are you spraying on your petunias? Oh, howdy, Miss Maddox. Oh, this here stuff is called Pest Away. It's supposed to keep the aminals out of my flower bed. It smells good to humans, but once a critter steps up to it, it stinks to high heaven. Oh. Well, what brings you out this way? Well, I made a batch of molasses cookies for the church social, and I have some left over, and uh -huh. I thought you and the sheriff might know what to do with them. Molasses cookies? Golly bum, yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, we'll find a good place to put them uh -huh. in her gut. Oh. So, uh, how's your bursitis acting up, Miss Maddie? Well, it's pretty painful, actually. Uh, I got it in my right arm, and it just hurts like a dickens all night long, and I stay up. I'm telling you, I stay up until almost four. Well, Bless hmm. your heart. The tall human has a weapon at his side. This is a symbol of authority. The metal object attached to his clothing reads, Deputy. Analyze this word, Quark. And deputy is an assistant to a higher authority, wise one. The sheriff. Hmm. Prepare your weapon, Quark. You will approach the deputy. Command him to take us to the sheriff. By your command, wise one. Deputy, deputy, look huh? look right behind you. Ed gum a beaver. I, what's one of them critters doing up here so far from Miller's Pond? I wouldn't know there. I'll deputy. tell you one thing. I sure don't want something like that around my pecan trees. I'll yeah. give him a dose of this here pest away. Oh. Take that, you mangy varmint. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that got him going. Sure did. He's scampering right off. Oh. I could have sworn there was a pot pistol in that beaver's hand. Well, Miss Maddox, I sure thank you for these molasses cookies, oh, but I gotta oh, go. Oh, sure. The sheriff sure gets mad at me if I'm late for work. Well, have a good day at work now, son. Master, master, hmm. the human attacked me with a foul-smelling fluid. Silence, Cork. 
But what is that large object the human is getting into? It is a transportation device, Master. Hmm. It is called an automobile. Automobile? I suddenly have an idea. Breaker knife. It's Deputy Roland Collins, Sheriff McRoy. There's no need to break out the blood hand, Sheriff. I'm on the way. Well, you're already 30 seconds late, Roland. Suppose somebody held up a liquor store while you was gone, and you got the only dead <laughs> blank squad car. What? Now, now, that seems unlikely, Sheriff, since this is a dry county and all. Well, now, oh, guess what? Miss Maddox made us up a whole big batch of molasses cookies, and boy, do they go down good. I saved you back a couple, though. Well, now, I guess I'll... Huh? Oh, what's that in my rearview mirror? I can't believe it. In my back seat, them are... Dog, them are fever. Mm, continue on your present course, human, mm. or I will melt your brain with a proton laser beam. Glory be to grace. Talking beaver. No, we are a highly advanced race of superior beings that merely resemble beavers. Inform your leader, the sheriff, that nothing is amiss. Then you will take us to him. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now, you just keep a light finger on that up there, Ray Gun. Um, everything is hunky-dory, sheriff. Uh, I'll be back at the station in uh, two minutes. I was just choking on a cookie crumb. I'll be coming with some company, too. Me and Rick seen it with their own eyes, Sheriff. Some sort of rectubular metal what's it just sitting just as pretty as you please underneath that beaver dam. I'm surprised that dynamite didn't blow it up. Uh-huh. Okay, boys, well, uh, quick as Roland gets here, we'll ride down there to Miller's Pond and check it out, all right? But I wish you'd... Uh, I, I'm here, Sheriff. Roland? I'm sorry I'm late. Roland, what you got your hands up in the air for? Well, uh, Are you addled? No, sir, I... And you know better than bring those mangy river rats in here? Mm, you had better keep a civil tongue, Sheriff. We are normally a peaceful race, but do not provoke me. Listen to that. Now, Roland, I ain't got no time for pranks. Now, Sheriff, how in the world could I fake a talking beaver? Mm, we are not beavers. I am the wise one of the planet Bornak. We have come many light years to seek a planetary system similar to our own. Now we have found it. You see, our planet is quite small by comparison. We reproduce quickly and live thousands of years. Oh. Overpopulation has forced us to find a new home. And you picked Biloxi? Yes. Soon the remaining Bornakians will arrive in this village. You must then surrender your homes to us. It will be necessary for you to find new living quarters elsewhere. I've just heard plumb enough. Ain't no space beaver gonna tell me to run out of Biloxi. I am afraid you have no choice, human. Resistance will be met with deadly force if necessary. Dad, blame it. I'm gonna put the stop to this here. Wise one, the deputy is taking out his weapon. Mm foolish human. Now you will die. No, Dad. no, don't shoot it, Roland. Dad, blame it. <laughs> Whoa. Now you will see the power of a Barnackian. <laughs> go. Whoa. That kind of tickles. What? <laughs> that tickles, Sheriff. This is impossible. It feels kind of tingly all over. It kind of feels good. Mm, this is impossible. I do not understand. The beam did not harm the human. It must be the human's genetic structure, wise one. Mm. Uh, the beam is not powerful enough to penetrate. Well, now, that's just a crying shame, ain't it, boys? Why don't you give me those pop pistols and step into this cage here? Dad, gum, are we going to incarcerate these beavers, Sheriff? Well, now, they tried to kill an officer of the law, didn't they, deputy? These boys can consider themselves under arrest, pending further investigation. Mm, you fools. 
You do not know what you are doing. The others will arrive soon, and then you will sorely regret what you are doing. I don't talk to beavers. All right, Ernie, get your winch and go down there and pull that metal object out of Miller's pond. Okay. I bound you that's their spaceship, and it's confiscated. All right, Sheriff, I'll be glad to. I want to get out from under the stench of these ugly critters anyhow. Um, let's see now. I believe I have me a bowl of chili, Mr. Buford, and, and a glass of buttermilk. You better bring the buttermilk out first, because I need to coat my stomach. I got this irritable bowel, you know. Well, all right, Mr. Conroy. I'll be right out with it. Uh, howdy there, Chef McElroy. Uh, howdy, Mr. Buford. Uh, just a uh, seltzer water for me. I got a sour stomach today. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, Sheriff McRoy, how do you do? I didn't see you standing there. Howdy, Conroy. Well, now, I sure feel a mite safer having you close by, yeah. Uh-huh. I believe I'd fall into a dead faint if one of them killer beavers was to waltz in here, yeah. <laughs> that, Sheriff, did you have to choke hold them to get, in, to get them into that cell? All right, Conroy. Don't believe everything you read in the Gazette. They ain't beavers. They're from another planet. Of course, I don't expect some sponge-headed grease monkey like you to understand it. So why don't you not rile me before I throw you in there with them? All righty, get one milk and one seltzer. Here you are, gentlemen. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Buford. Buford. Chef! Chef! Rex. Oh. What's the matter, Rex? They, they got to talk to you. Okay. It's an invasion. Huh? It's a full-scale invasion. Oh, easy there, Rex. Easy down oh. now. Well, tell me what's going on. I was flying over my property in my current dusting plane. Uh-huh. When I saw them. What? There were spaceships. Uh, hundreds of them. Lord. Just like the one me and Ernie found. Oh, Lord. They're coming down from the sky. Oh, the... <sighs> well, that head alien said more was coming. Can you say hundreds? Oh, no, well, I was wrong. I was wrong. No, it was thousands. Look! Look outside! Out of the window! Look! They're coming! Okay. All right, everyone, calm down now, calm down. Hey. I got this all under control. What's going on? Uh, Mr. Buford, hey. you make sure everyone stays here, okay? Okay, Mr. Sheriff. Lock the place up. Okay. Rex, come with me. We're going to the station. Everybody, don't panic. Please, don't panic. Well, come down, everybody. Well, come down now. The sheriff is coming. All under What in tarnation is all that racket going on outside? Who's out there? I'll clear your sinuses with a 12 gauge, you trifle with Ernie Pottle Dinger. And now, us entrance human, your home belongs to us now. Look my eyes out. It's them bug-eyed space beavers. Spaceships out there, fur as the eye can see. You ought to be bored for the simples. You think I'm just going to tuck my tail and, and run sissy footed out of my own house. I see you out there, you pigeons, toad, space weasels. I'm going to blast you back to morning. <laughs> and, and I plan to make one of you pay for this window I had to break, too. <clears throat> <clears throat> Take back, you rug-covered vermin. And blaming them out of shells. Curse Homer's hardware for running out of 12 gauge shells. What are they doing out there? They're chewing down one of my kumquat trees. Gonna use it for a battering ram to knock down my door. Oh, good lord. Get away from here, you bow legged alien rats. Oh, lord, I, I gotta call the sheriff. <laughs> That's a good thing I wrote down the number on the phone. Hello. Hello, Sheriff. They're here. 
aliens. Space aliens are here. They're coming to breaking down my door with my own cum quat tree. They're good lord. This home belongs to us in the name of Bornak. Hello. Hello, Ernie. Ernie, you still there? Man, what about the gut cut off? Sheriff, Sheriff, them beavers are trying to chew through the door. Huh? I told you last year we should have got us a metal door, but no. Oh, yeah, well, hindsight's 2020, Roland. Now calm down. Now get resourceful, boy. Uh, take them shelves down over there and, and get a hammer and some nails from the storage room and, and start boarding up that door, PDQ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Sheriff. I just thought I'd panic for a few seconds. Mm, why prolong the inevitable, Sheriff? Eventually, you will have to submit to defeat. Leave this village while you still have a chance. Shut up, you galaxy-hopping woodchuck. This here ray gun you turned on rolling may not do no harm to humans, but I bet you'd roast your flea bitten hide. Mm, the energy cells on those weapons will run down soon, human. And what will you do then? Will you kill us all with your conventional weapons? We outnumber you three to one. Dead blame it, I hate a smart alecky beaver. Uh, I could use some ideas on how to handle this, Rex. Yeah, well, you heard what that critter said. There's more beavers than there are bullets. Yeah. I'd call for outside help, but heck, who would believe me? Besides, I'd be plumb embarrassed to admit a bunch of mangy things like that around this out of Biloxi. And they chew through all the tires in the cars. They're the clever rascals, all right. Hey, hey, Roland, look out. Huh? What's get through that window there? What, that now? It is time uh, for you to relocate, human. It's time for you to retreat, you ugly beast. Uh, I had a can of this passed away stuff in my desk drawer, Sheriff. I'm going to spray him with that. What are you? Oh. <laughs> hey. The stench is overwhelming. Hey. Hey, it worked. It drove him out. Yeah. What the heck is that, Roland? Well, it's called Pest Away, Sheriff. Huh? It's a smell that drives animals out of their mind. Pest Away? Let me see that can, Roland. Pest Away. Let's see on the back. It is dangerous to inhale this product to achieve a hallucinogenic effect. Oh. In case of accidental overdose, call 1-800. Oh. Oh. Roland, I could kiss you. Yeah. We ain't dead yet, fellas. Well, what have you got in mind, Sheriff? Well, you got a crop dusting plane, ain't you, Rex? Yeah. Imagine your plane loaded up with this pest away stuff. Yeah. You could fly over Biloxi and cover the town with the jump. And that would repel the critters back into space, most likely. Well, that's what I'm banking on, Rex. Here you go, here's this can of pest away. Oh. You might need it. Yeah, I want you to run as fast as your dogs will carry you. Yeah. Up to your house. Uh -huh. Roland, take the boards off the door. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna call this place and order up a tanker truck full of this pest away stuff. Pest away. Then I'll meet you at the Biloxi airstrip. Gotcha. We'll fill up your plane. Yeah. We're gonna stink these beavers out of town, boy. Yeehaw, All right. here, the town. here I go! Leadership. Look, Gorp, up in the sky. It's a flying machine. A flying machine? A human is flying the machine. What is the meaning of this? This is Rex Lordy, the Sheriff McElroy. I'm flying over the town right now, and I don't like what I see. Those alien beavers are terrorizing the citizens. I'm gonna dump this pest away stuff right now. <sighs> The flying machine is going to fly over our heads! <laughs> the flying machine! It has released a fluid of some kind! We are drenched! 
in the fluid, in the smell, the foul odor of the fluid. It is hard for me to breathe. We must, we must retreat to our vessels, my brothers. The humans are far too hostile. We, we must leave from this planet at once. They're taking off in their spaceships. <laughs> Release us from this cave, Sheriff. We will leave your cursed planet anything to escape this powerful stench. Mm. Well, some of that pest away stuff did kind of waft in here, and it is kind of stout, ain't it, boys? All right, little buddies, I'm going to let you go. But first, let this be a lesson to you. You don't take what ain't yours. And as far as your planet being crowded... Why don't you try sleeping six to a bed like I used to do when I was a kid? I had six brothers and seven sisters. Mm, silence, mortal. Your voice, it annoys me. And the smell, the foul smell. Quickly, my brothers, yes. to the vessel. Yes. We must leave that horrible smell. By your command, wise one. <laughs> well, look at him go. Well, we we took care of another problem, Sheriff. Yeah. Whew. I, I tell you something, Sheriff, I... I'm kind of lightheaded. Yeah. Yeah, me too, Roland. It's that pest away stuff. Rex must have dumped a couple hundred gallons of it. And you know what it said on that can? It can kind of cause a hallucinogenic effect. If you start seeing pink monkeys and stuff flying around, don't worry, I'm seeing them too. Yeah. We need some fresh air. Yeah. Well, there ain't no fresh air around here. We'll have to go into the next county. I'll tell you something, Sheriff. I could eat a whole box of donuts. Well, I kind of got the munchies myself, Roland. We'll stop over at the donut shop on our way to the next town. Okay. Sure is a weird world, ain't it, Roland? Boy, you said a mouthful and more there, Sheriff. A mouthful and more. Boy, boy, my legs feel like noodles. of another story, haven't we? Yes. Uh, a little footnote to our tale for today. The smell of pest away eventually drifted away from Biloxi, and when it did, the citizens found that they had gained over a hundred pounds each. Well, and Attack of the Munchies will do that, won't <laughs> Delivery for Chet Cheddar. Mm -hmm. Oh, a, a delivery. That must be the new body bags. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you, you have to go, do you? Oh, well, I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again for another story. I... Hope to see you soon. Until next time, pleasant dreams. You have just heard Chet Cheddar's Tales from the Moor. Today's installment, Biloxi Battles the Bogus Beavers of Bornak. The names and characters portrayed in this production are fictitious. Any similarities with actual persons, living or dead, including beavers, is purely coincidental. A production by M&J Audio. <laughs>